Traumatic brain injury spans a wide spectrum. It's basically any change in brain function that's related to an immediate mechanical energy force on the brain itself. And at one end of the spectrum, we know it as concussion. Uh, concussion is a sudden change in neurologic function that occurs with this type of mechanical energy force. It was previously thought that it was really only when people passed out and lost consciousness that you called it a concussion. But in fact, I think people knew as well that there were altered states of consciousness, uh, confusion, trouble attending, uh, imbalance, dizziness, that uh, could occur due to these mechanical forces uh, even without loss of consciousness. So concussion's one side. The other side is what we call severe traumatic brain injury, such as what might happen to someone in an automobile accident, a high-speed automobile accident, where the brain is extensively damaged, there's severe swelling, and there's often uh, fatality as the outcome. So it spans that entire spectrum. On the concussion side, uh, patients generally get better over a period of time. Sometimes it's you know a couple of hours, sometimes a day or two, sometimes a week or so. Occasionally people have trouble over longer periods of time. Um, the more severe brain injuries actually cause damage to the brain and those patients have a very long recovery time before they can get back their function. But it does happen. The brain does try to recover from these injuries. So we uh, thought about trying to increase the value of the research investment that the DOD and NIH were putting out each year. Um, the DOD, of course, was uh, very interested because of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and the signature wound being tr blast injury to the soldiers. And uh, so they were quite interested in trying to make the most value for their data and similarly on the NIH side. And the idea is that uh, data that's collected but stays in a drawer somewhere, uh, someone writes a paper on it, but then no one ever sees it again, its value really declines dramatically. Um, uh, but if we could put it together in a fashion where the data can be compared, that that would increase the value of any data that's collected in this area. So both the DOD and NINDS were really interested in, in moving this forward. Across the NIH now and across the country in terms of um, people looking at health data, there is a tremendous uh, effort afoot to uh, make the most value from bringing large data together. Uh, and so for traumatic brain injury at the NIH side and the DOD side, we fund many grant projects, uh, individual grants looking at particular problems in traumatic brain injury. And we think that the value of those, of those efforts can be significantly enhanced by bringing the data together. Um, and, and that, we think, will, will offer people insight into um, what is the best therapy for any individual patient, which is really what it's all about. Traumatic brain injury uh, spans a wide spectrum in terms of severity, in terms of outcomes, and uh, so it's not like a, it's not a single thing. It's a heterogeneous um, event that occurs in the, in the brain. And so trying to treat TBI, quote unquote, is a failed experiment. It's not one thing. Um, we think that the way to really treat TBI is to go after particular patho pathologies that are occurring in the people with TBI, whether it's brain swelling, whether it's inflammation. Um, but to do that, one has to know in which patients it's occurring. And so we need to segment traumatic brain injury in a very logical, scientific fashion. And we think when we do that, so if we have a lot of data, we can see the different groups and how they're acting together, then we can target therapies that are group specific, so much more precise therapy uh, coming to the patient that is gonna most benefit.